Benvingudes i benvinguts a la segona jornada del tercer congrés de New Space Economy de Barcelona. Recordar-vos que trobareu la QR en les pantalles per descarregar el programa de la jornada d'avui i que també hi haurà algunes de les taules que seran en anglès. Si necessiteu traductor, al final de tot de la sala podreu trobar els dispositius que us ajudaran en la traducció català-anglès i anglès-català. Ahir, el sector català va demostrar un cop més que està ple de talents, de coratges i d'iniciativa. Durant la primera jornada d'aquest congrés, Guido Lovrini ens va parlar del programa Copernicus, un dels principals programes d'observació de la Terra, i de com l'Agència Espacial Europea comença a estar involucrada en programes de New Space. Jordi Puigsuari, co-inventor de l'estàndard de CubeSats, ens va parlar de com ha estat l'origen del New Space, del seu significat, de què implica i quins impactes té i pot tenir en un futur a la nostra societat. Ahir es va debatre sobre llançadors, sobre ports especials, es va debatre de com transformar ciències en productes operacionals. Se'ns va presentar la nova oficina de l'espai liderada per Josep Colomer i integrada dintre de l'Institut d'Estudis Especials de Catalunya. Es va parlar de la nova aposta per accelerar empreses a través d'una incubadora de l'Agència Especial Europea. Es va parlar de com liderar una empresa i un projecte especial. I es va parlar també d'oportunitats de finançament, tant públic com privat, amb ponents d'arreu del planeta. Podríem parlar hores i hores i continuar amb els debats que ahir vam començar, però no heu vingut a escoltar-me a mi. Per tant, només voldria compartir amb vosaltres les principals idees amb les quals em vaig quedar del dia d'ahir. La idea principal és que el New Space ha vingut per quedar-se, que el New Space és una realitat vigent, present i futura, i que Catalunya és i vol ser un actor representatiu en aquesta revolució. L'èxit del Congrés n'és un clar exemple. Per utilitzar una metàfora, a mi m'agrada pensar de l'espai com un trencaclosques. No pots veure l'imatge fins que no tens totes les peces. I sobretot, és una cosa que no es pot fer sol. No és una sola peça, sinó que en són moltes. És una feina de molts actors. I amb això, Trec unes conclusions. Per exemple, que el New Space necessita l'espai tradicional i institucional. Necessita les lliçons apreses que hem après durant tots aquests anys en els quals l'espai ha evolucionat molt. Necessita l'espai tradicional al mateix temps del New Space per aconseguir agilitzar, estandarditzar processos, per reduir costos, i passar a ser més efectius. Es va parlar de finançaments, i vam entendre que els finançaments públics necessiten també dels finançaments privats per continuar i consolidar aquestes idees i garantir l'èxit i la continuació dels projectes que s'han començat. I també vam entendre que els satèl·lits són molt importants, però no són l'única part de la cadena, i que es necessiten també llançaments i ports especials que proporcionin llançaments flexibles i assequibles. Si nosaltres volem que un trencaclosques amb totes aquestes peces que formen l'espai es mantingui durant molt temps, hem d'enganxar les peces. I m'agrada pensar que el talent és la peça, és la cola que enganxa totes les peces del trencaclosques per assegurar-ne una durabilitat. Però aquest talent s'ha d'educar i s'ha de retenir. I aquesta és una de les activitats en les quals es basa també aquest congrés. Ahir va ser el dia dels experts en l'espai. Avui, en canvi, tenim altres grans reptes davant nostre. El principal repte és aconseguir parlar d'espai i de tecnologia sense tecnicismes, ja que l'objectiu d'avui és una aproximació diferent a la d'ahir. És una aproximació més pragmàtica, molt focalitzada als usuaris i entendre problemàtiques i necessitats del mercat. 
en buscar-ne les aplicacions utilitzant dades i tecnologies de l'espai per donar les respostes i intentar explicar als sectors que el New Space està aquí per ajudar. Sectors com el turisme, l'automoció, les ciutats intel·ligents, els transports públics, la gestió de catàstrofes són sectors que es poden beneficiar d'aquest New Space. Així doncs, avui no parlarem de tecnologia, sinó de tot el que podem fer amb aquesta tecnologia. Començarem el nostre matí d'inspiració parlant d'oportunitats de mercat habilitades per al sector espacial en mans de Walter Peters, professor de negocis espacials i gestió a la International Space University. Peter, the floor, the Walter, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mireia. Thanks for the nice introduction. Good morning to everybody. I'm extremely pleased to be here again. I've been several times in uh, Catalonia. I uh, saw the space sector evolving, and I'm very happy that, uh, in my opinion, you, you have now found a new impetus, and I really encourage you to, uh, to continue with that. And you found a very good area here, new space. I'm also happy, by the way, I think I estimated yesterday that there are something like nearly 10% of the people in the room which have an affiliation with ISU, so I, I, uh, I encourage you also there to continue with that, uh, uh, that link in view of talent. Yesterday we had a very, very interesting uh, panels which I, I, I followed with a lot of interest, but I thought it might be interesting to take a little bit of a step backwards and to look at new space from a more academic, I would not say, but uh, from a more systematic point of view. And uh, the promised click doesn't work. <laughs> so that's, uh, can somebody from the organization help me? Okay, oh, good. So I am going to, not too theoretically, but I'm going to point out the differences which were mentioned yesterday about what is traditional space, and by the way, I don't like the term old space, because uh, that makes me feel old. <laughs> uh, traditional space, new space, and what are the opportunities? So, new space background. As, as far as I see it, the old space business went to three waves, which are now still coexisting, that's why we're talking also about PPP. The first wave was governmental. That means the government was using tax money, taxpayers' money, to have certain objectives. And they said, what was the objective? To put a satellite in space, to put a human in space, and so on. So 1957, 1961. I think that wave stopped in 1970 because that was when the first human was on the moon. And afterwards, there was a bit less interest. But the, inter the industry had gained money, had knowledge in mainly, and the industry say, yeah, but I'm sitting here with thousands of people. What do, what do I do? So industry started to use debt financing or their own money to do themselves space activities. First in the first uh, layer, I would say telecommunication, then it went to do earth observation and so on. That work, worked very fine uh, to give you a feeling. Uh, now we have something like 25, 75. While, while 50 years ago it was 100 zero. So it's now 25% government, 75% commercial and new space. Me personally, and I will try to defend this the next few minutes, I think that the, the new wave that we see now is new space because there are considerable differences bit between new space and traditional space. I list them here. This is my personal view, by the way, that, that I have to say. I list them here. You see that there are quite, quite a number of very important differences. Uh, you can read them, but I want to point out a few. First of all, design. The design idea from the new space world is that you're going to make something simpler, lighter, because that, it, that saves you also a lot of uh, mass to bring it in space. Disadvantage, shorter lifetime. But if I, if I speak to a number of my old students, they say shorter lifetime, I don't care. Why would I 
build something that, that remains 15 years in space. Technology changes every two, three years. So if my satellite goes for two years, that's okay. That in contrast to what happened in the past where we as engineers, and I'm from the old school, I admit, old school engineers, we wanted to have something very highly reliable uh, with a lot of redundancy. And at the end, we ended up with very heavy satellites due to the redundancy. We don't do this anymore. We don't want a satellite of 15 years anymore. So this is a complete engineering change and a, and a complete way of thinking. That's very important, uh, which I will show also a little bit later, because it, it, is, it requires a number of thinkings, which most of the people said that, was not that would not be possible. Just take the example of Elon Musk with all his pros and cons, uh, who, who said, I'm going to make a reusable uh, boosters and reusable rockets. Well, let's be very honest. All the NASA engineers says that's impossible. You are not going to make it. it doesn't do it. They have fresh, fresh idea. And I think the, the summary of ev everything is risk. In the traditional space world, we were risk advert because we, were, we had this in mind that we were also working with money from the government and that should not go wrong because then, then our companies would have suffered. I'm not saying, yesterday there was some mentioning on the risk. I'm not saying that the new space people are loving risk. I'm just saying they accept business risk, uh, risks, calculated risks. Yeah? One thing you can ask yourself and some people ask you, well, why is the, the traditional sector then uh, not doing this? Well, there are some technical economic reasons. We are most of the time talking about niche markets. And a very big company has high overheads, has a high structure, has high cost. They, they cannot have a profitability on, on these little niche markets. But there is a more philosophical thing, which is not so obvious maybe, and that is the design philosophy. It's not easy to change a company philosophy or a design philosophy. I give you one, ex one real personal example. I was once involved in building a large space simulator in, uh, in ESA, and we gave that to a company called Carl Zeiss. Everybody knows it, eh? uh, also the astronomers, Carl Zeiss. So the first time they, they gave the plans to me, I said, hmm, it's nice, but this looks like a telescope. And then the guy from Carl Zeiss said, yeah, I'm sorry, we make 50 years telescopes, it's in our blood. So sometimes you, uh, if you want to ask a big organization, like the one I can talk about, because together with my friend Juan and others, I've been working there for 35 years. If you would ask ESA to make a CubeSat, that would virtually be impossible, because the, the design philosophy is different. So there was all this conf confusion about what is new space, what is commercial space, what is the thing. Uh, I felt myself a little bit no, I'm not obliged, but I thought I'm going to try to propose a definition which I published, which you see here, and where I, in, where I put a few keywords in the definition. So first of all, I'm not saying that they are not using money of the government. Elon Musk would never been there without money of the, of the government, let's be very honest. But their thinking is independent of government philosophy very important, and I will address on that, they use equity financing. So they don't use debt financing, they don't use stocks. And what they try to do is an affordable access to space using novel space applications. That, again, I have to stress, this is my personal suggestion of a definition. Uh, when I published the definition, I got, as usual, an enormous lot of uh, uh, people saying, uh, this is wrong. <laughs> so I say, yeah, then give, you, give another definition. And I don't, I don't know if it was so wrong because since 2019, nobody gave another definition. So I'm, I'm relatively uh, stable to show this again. So what are the basics of new space? First of all, the one thing which we have to, also for the youngsters here, what we have to get out of the way is that if you talk about new space, people are immediately thinking about two things, Leo constellations and micro launchers. Okay, that's correct, that's fine. Due to the Leo constellations, we found a lot of uh, 
new applications. You think about Spire, you think about Fleet, about uh, and so on. Uh, the micro launches will certainly come, but one thing that scares me a little bit is the figures there. I'm afraid that there is a s going to be a, a risk for a market saturation. Take the area I know pretty well, uh, because I'm also helping a number of startups, micro launches. Uh, the last count I made was 103 companies are making a micro launcher. If I take a few of the companies out, which I think is, or dormant, to use a nice word, I'm still left with 80. Is there a market for 80 micro launches? No. Uh, I, don't, I cannot tell you how big the market is, 10, 12, 15, I don't know. So this is directly an area where I would say, just my personal advice also to my students, be careful. But there are a lot of adjacent areas there where you can help on the ground segment, on, uh, I, I just give one word, cybersecurity. Hmm? Uh, most, of the, most of the people, oh, excuse me. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, most of the people who are, who are know pretty well, because many of these uh, people, again, are ISU students, like Spire and Planet, uh, they cannot afford a big department on, uh, uh, on cybersecurity. So there are many areas where you could help these people by giving some inputs. My biggest advice if students come to me and say, what shall I do in the new space sector is use existing data. Use the data which are there and combine them. Why? Uh, the first obvious thing, it's a low capex. CAPEX, capital expenditure, you don't have to invest so much. You just buy pictures or you buy data and even you use standard data. I can give an exam a, a few examples of some of the students who made a startup using all the data from Google and, and things which are there. So it, the landscape is not only, is not only constellations, which I think is... Uh, relatively saturated at the moment. I personally expect a number of mergers and acquisitions in, the, in that area. Uh, if, you, if you see the Starlinks, the OneWebs and, and, and all the other ones, there may be, just as a side parenthesis, and I'm just going to throw it in the, in the audience, there may be another area in VLEO, very low Earth orbit, which we have not, uh, not seen so well yet. That might be another area. But there are many other areas which you would not think of. I'm, I'm going to be careful about exploration, although a number of these companies are doing fantastic work in exploration, which the, the again, building up on other experience, like mining experience or geo experience, but also the ground cement, the data handling, the cybersecurity, all these things, they are also part of new space cloud computing, uh, use of artificial intelligence, it's, it's all adjacent to the mainline new space. So uh, this is the areas where you can certainly, and we heard over the last days a few people, where we can certainly find a lot of very interesting applications. Important here is how do you help the many of the young people here? How do we we will help them to get into the new space sector. And a little bit, I, uh, I already uh, warned Pep that I'm going to do a bit of a strange uh, uh, side. I'm, I'm going to give an example of something of an or a country which in my opinion is doing extremely well, although I'm in competition with them, but that doesn't matter. Luxembourg. Luxembourg from the beginning has created a philosophy. Luxembourg said, okay, we're going to have five pillars and we do them one after the other and we're going to build it up. We're going to make sure that the population, that the politicians are in favor of what we're going to do in new space. They succeeded. We're going to make sure that there's a good regulatory framework. They succeeded. Frankly, the, uh, if you go in detail, 
the Luxembourg space law is by far the best one for new space in the, in the world. Uh, I would even say it's better than the Space Act in, uh, in America, but that's technical. Of course, in Luxembourg, people are very close to the government. It's a very small country, so it's relatively easy to go up and down in the, in the hierarchy there. Then they said we have to build talent. Uh, if we want to have, uh, we heard it yesterday, if we want to have a real, real sector which is moving, we need talent. So they invested in uh, Luxembourg University, in laboratories, they, they invested in education, they sent a lot of people to ISU, they sent people to Nancy, to, to other things. They then we need, where, where they are also very successful, we need to help that talent uh, with R&D facilities which they cannot afford themselves. So we're going to build up incubators and help them. And very important, and I'm going to come back on that, and I think uh, uh, Jose yesterday mentioned it also, they immediately thought about the next step. Seed money is one thing, and I'm not saying that seed money is easy to get, but it is relatively easy to get. But the next step is difficult. And that is where Luxembourg was from the beginning uh, thinking of. So they immediately thought of the whole cycle. So incubators is for me the key. I am personally uh, started an incubator in ISU, which is uh, same as successful of what we, we had. Unfortunately, we got uh, we got a hit. I I've uh, I started the incubator, and the day afterwards it was COVID. So you can imagine that was uh, <laughs> that, that didn't work very well. The two together. Now there are two for the younger people. There are two types of incubators, and I'm not not going to judge. You have business incubators, which are going to help you on financing. And then you have ecosystem incubators, which are not going to help you only on financing, but which are also, what I put in green here, provide you technical support. And that second element is important for something which I'm going to try in this audience. I never uh, used this view graph. Uh, let's see if uh, I would be very interested in the, in the feedback. What was the traditional way up to 20 years ago in the space sector. The aerospace industry was hiring aerospace engineers, scientists. Normally they worked a few years on subsystems, system engineers. And then they found out that their satellites could be used for certain applications. So the aerospace engineer at the end ended up to talk to the market. And you see the difference in colors, which I did on purpose. That did not always work very well. I've seen a number of cases where uh, a remote sensing specialist was going to, to a farmer and say, why don't you use GIS? And then the farmer said, why don't you leave me alone? I have work to do. So it, the, the, com the communication was not so fantastic. What we see now in the new space world is different. We see now specialists who are using toolkits, or are using toolboxes to go to a market that they know. If I say specialists, it can be anybody. It can be architects, it can be IT people, it can be things. Because the big difference is the middle block. In the beginning, we only had the raw data from space. And you could not work with them if you didn't understand them. I compare this very often to my students with a computer. When I started, and many of you as well, when I started to use a computer, you had to know a good knowledge of programming language. Uh, you have to know Fortran, in my case, as engineering, and, and, and COBOL for economics. You don't need to be a programmer anymore to use a computer because the tools are there. So space is now a commodity, as to use a technical economic term. It's the same thing like current. You put your device in a socket and you, you do, don't want to know where the current comes from, from a nuclear plant or from a gas plant or from a thing, you want 220 volt. And all these toolkits were not there in the past. They are now there. If you want an illustration, I have a, last week I welcomed a new company and they are going to look via earth observation data to uh, roofs which are suited for gardens. Uh, you know, I think in Barcelona you also 
other thing. So they were measuring and they were also advising people, hey, your roof is perfect to put a garden on it. So, uh, yeah, that was very good thing. I, I, I talked to the lady, there was a lady. I see, by the way, more and more ladies uh, uh, creating companies. I don't know why. Uh, and I, I, I applaud it. I applaud it. And I said to the lady, yeah, you, you, you have quite a good knowledge on GIS. I said, well, I said, did you work in the sector? I said, what's your degree? I said, I have a master's degree in international relations. I said, but GIS, with the toolkit, I learned in a week. So there, this is a complete different change. We have now people who know a market, who can come into that market irrespective of their background. I have architects which will go into the market, IT specialists, agricultural engineers, geographic, uh, geographical uh, scientists. Uh, because, so they know the market, they can easily use the space data. And this is something which I, I encourage also for you to promote here in Catalonia. Don't uh, get away from this sort of enigma that you have to have a doctorate in aerospace engineering to come into the new space world. That's not true. That's not true anymore because the toolkits, which we didn't have, are now there. We have now people like uh, uh, Monica who are developing uh, algorithms and, and, and who are helping you to understand the space data. This was shown yesterday and I'm... Uh, I, I tried to, this night to calculate the royalties uh, for Juan of using it yesterday. Uh, so I'm not going to go through it. It was very highly discussed. There was a question yesterday which I, uh, I, I like to answer here. Uh, one scientist here in the audience correctly said, what is the access? Well, a few years ago there was a study and between the start of a company and reaching the initial Break even, equity break even point was then 6.5 years. Now it's longer. No? So, so just to a thing, and as uh, Jose correctly pointed out, the other blocks don't move. So it means it takes you much, much longer before you, you, uh, you, you are really, really profitable. And that's what yesterday was mentioned. That's where a lot of companies are dying in these fifth, sixth, seven years. To get seed money is easy. The next round A, the round B is not so easy. And in, I think also for Catalonia, I would recommend to think about it now already, you know, to have contacts with these people. This is grouped every time per five years. And I find I, it's a bit older, the graphic, but it's a very, uh, very interesting one where you see that the market in space financing was relatively stable, but not spectacular. And you see the, the change there uh, with two main areas which are growing. Seed money, seed money and grants, and venture capital. So for the young people, you are living in good times. The money is there. What, what the people are waiting for is your ideas, is your initiatives to become an entrepreneur. The money is there. But one, one remark, ask enough from the beginning. The big companies, the big venture capital companies are not so keen on spreading their money in little, in little groups. They will do it in slices, but they, they are not, uh, they don't want to administer 150 uh, companies. So, Ask enough money. The last survey which I saw is that the venture capitalist wouldn't mind going between two and 75 million. So, so that sur makes you surviving the, the, the value of the debt, as I said before. Uh, incubators, I don't know uh, here in uh, Catalonia, in our, in our case in the incubator, you can have something like 30 to 100. 200, uh, 200,000. So that is not going to make you survive six, seven years. Hmm? Venture capital is probably the area and ask enough for that. So what did I try to bring as a message? 
and I hope I didn't fail in, uh, in my attempt. First of all, for me, new space is a paradigm shift. It is not just another way of doing commercial space. It is a real paradigm shift due to the difference that I show, uh, showed. Okay, the core of new space is, is the LEO constellations. Uh, is, the, is the one web and all the I IoT, Internet of Things, which we, we see happening in order to bring the satellites, which have an average weight of 140 kilogram now, people think 180 kilogram in the future, small sets, we call it. You need other launchers. Uh, you, need, you don't need a big launch, or you need launches which can launch a number of satellites, like Falcon 9, and then distribute them via space truck. So there is a, a complete new thinking in, the, in, this, uh, in this world. Do not underestimate that there is a lot of room, also for you young people, to give services to these companies. You don't have to start a new constellation immediately. You can also help these people in the areas that I said, I know that they are looking for cheaper, better gyroscopes. I know that they are looking for better LIDARs. I know that they are looking for cyber security, which they cannot develop themselves because they don't have the capex, they don't have the, the financials. But my biggest advice to you young, young youngsters here who are ambitious to be entrepreneurs, use existing data and combine them. The, the, the most interesting way of starting a company is to think which data can I use and combine in one algorithm. Yeah, I'll give, give an example. I have an architect who started the company in, in our incubator. He's using Google data, he's using the wind data, he's using the, the location to say to the people, okay, in your case, so many square meters of solar panels and uh, uh, a pump and this, and, and I, I recommend you a battery to, to, uh, to recuperate the energy using existing data. And he's doing a very good job, uh, by the way, in, uh, in Prague. You need an ecosystem. And I'm very, very pleased to hear the last days that you're now working on this ecosystem. It started. You need a good ecosystem to help these young people with incubators, uh, talent, training, you, uh, that ecosystem is something which you are working on and I really applaud you for that. But do not forget the next phase. Most of the ecosystems are only looking and giving the youngsters 30, 40, 50, 100K and ignore the fact that they will have then fall into problems afterwards. So please take also in your considerations some connections with the next phase, with the venture capitalists, uh, which uh, I tried to get one here, a friend of mine from Seraphim, uh, Mark Bogert, he couldn't come. Uh, th that, that there are this, these next phases uh, you should also think of. And maybe to end with a little bit of a philosophical uh, thing, maybe uh, I personally think that new space could contribute to the democratization of space, not only in Europe, but also in other countries. Because now new space brings space in reach of other countries which had no, I'd no chance before to build satellites or to be into the space sector. So that were a little bit my global conclusions. I, uh, as I said, I took a step backwards uh, and hope I was, I'm not too much conflicting of what was said yesterday in the panels and if it was conflicting that's uh, my privilege as a professor. Uh, I could not do that for ESA, so I c that's why I left ESA. Uh, as a professor, you're more free. Uh, I just got here from the, uh, very kind from the organizers, that uh, there, is a, uh, there is a little opportunity for burning questions. So if you have now a question that you say, if I don't ask the question now, I cannot sleep tonight, um, can I now ask you, uh, Express yourself and, 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 and put a question, if there are questions. Or did I uh, overwhelm all of you? <laughs> no questions? I, th I think you get a, a microphone and everybody can, can hear the question, yeah? 
think I can sleep tonight, but I think I, I want to ask anyways. When you said about a uh, new opportunity in, in data uh, specialist, you mean for other markets in general or within the space industry? The, the answer, I, I got often that question. Uh, you see also that venture capitalists are not, the venture capitalists which are were specializing on space are virtually not working anymore. So I would say if you have a capacity, use it for all the markets. So the, uh, space is very noble and space gives you a very nice etiquette that you can say my company is working in the space sector, but don't put your eggs in one basket. If you have products that can be for other sectors, do it, do it. Uh, so so uh, the most successful companies which I know, the most successful startups work for space, but are not afraid to use the same products for other sectors. So yes, absolute, absolute correct, uh, correct assumption from you. I think Monica here in the begin in the um, good morning. Yesterday it was said that venture capital was not more um, dominant or available in the US than in Europe. Somebody said that there is as much venture capital in Europe than in the US. Um, what's your opinion of that? Because um, Venture uh, capital normally wants to be close to where the company is um, developing. Uh, yeah, I, I, may, I was thinking about putting uh, one of the recent slides from Bryce. I can all recommend Bryce uh, thing, where the venture capital is, is uh, concentrated now. Uh, it's correct. There is a lot of venture capital in Europe. But may I make one remark? There's also a lot of venture capital in other countries in Asia. Many of the new space companies that I know have Japanese venture capital or have uh, even Chinese venture capital via Hong Kong or via Singapore venture capital. So venture capital is getting more and more global than a few years ago. And it was not even in the US, by the way, just for a so I think most of the venture capital in America is in California. You remember it, it was this start with Silicon Valley and, and so on. But venture capital is available everywhere, everywhere now. Uh, and mu much easier to find. You think about Seraphim uh, in, in Europe, to give you one name. I can give you a few. I present every year, I, I present the ranking order of venture capitalists to my uh, students. And you can see it enormously changing. The, the, for instance, to give an example, there was 10% venture capital in BRIC countries 10 years ago. There's now 25% uh, venture capital in BRIC countries. So venture capital is everywhere. It's everywhere now. And it, it is correct. It was yesterday said by Jose, I believe. Uh, there is probably more venture capital here in Europe than in America. But it's also not only Europe and America. You can find it everywhere. iSpace in Luxembourg. They are in Luxembourg because the regulatory framework is very good. The money comes from Japan. And I can give you several, several examples like that. Thank you. Hello, Walter. Oh, thank you so much for the, for the presentation. Um, when we are talking about business incubators, we are thinking mostly on those who can help companies transforming ideas into services or products. But according to the level of maturity of, of the startups, uh, other services are needed. How do you see to, to address those kind of needs for more mature companies at the startup phase? Well, then we're talking about accelerators. Huh? Uh, so, so then, we, well, first of all, what I call business incubators are incubators which take equity normally six, seven, eight percent. And they mainly, and they are very good in it, don't, don't take me wrong, they mainly helping the, the, those companies to get seed funding and to get business angels. So I rather find ecosystem incubators, which are helping companies not only with money, but also with technology and with uh, know-how, having an environment where they can call up specialists, uh, 
remember the slide that I said, we are now more and more seeing specialists going into an incubator without any space background. So that the second thing is the accelerators. Uh, do not build up an incubator without already thinking about an accelerator. But that is uh, bringing a company, scaling it up, which is the big problem. These people know how to scale up your company. Most of the companies go and then hang and then cannot survive. So you have to get this next step and their accelerators are specialists. I, I'm not going to give names. Some of them are just one advice, be very careful. I know the accelerators pretty well. Some are very good. Uh, I think Jose used the word yesterday. They're all greedy, <laughs> very greedy. So some of them are a little bit are a little bit less greedy and are a little bit old, but, but there are a few very, very good ones. But you need an accelerator after your incubator. So I think I, uh, oh, yep. go on. Uh, thank you, Walter, for your uh, presentation. We're learning from you that in the world of finance, there are no more borders. Uh, could you tell us about the concept of virtual incubators? Uh, do you have examples? Yeah, could there are examples. I am, uh, I have mixed feelings about it, go on. Uh, Due to COVID, we were forced to do virtual education. And I'm not so sure if that was such a good idea, but we had to do it. Uh, I think a virtual inc uh, incubator will suffer from the same thing. Very interesting for these people of the incubators, I give the example of our incubator in ISU. They meet each other. I have one incubator who is looking at making crystals for uh, cancer treatments, and next door is the incubator of Space Pharma. So they talk to each other. So the incubators uh, talk to each other, they see visitors coming into the building, maybe the, the visitor goes for incubator A, but then they can they can say, yeah, hey, by the way, uh, if, if that guy is coming or that lady is coming and talk about you about intellectual property, can I ask her a question? That you cannot do virtual. So maybe I'm traditional, <laughs> yes? I'm, uh, I'm traditional school, I'm, I refuse to be old school. <laughs> uh, I don't believe so much in virtual incubators. I think they lose a lot of their, uh, of their, what they are really meant to, bringing people together. If you go in a big incubator, you see a big room where all people are working, thing, but they talk to each other. And there is an exchange, there is a, uh, the information flows that you say, oh, oh, that one works with uh, drones. I'm going to ask uh, that, that one a, a question. Do you think if I have my GIS data that your drone can help? Uh, that sort of, I personally still believe that being together, which is also, for instance, the ISU concept with different uh, disciplines is better, better. Okay, I think I don't want to bring the whole program in troubles. <laughs> that is not my thing and I, Thank you for your attention and I thank you for the very interesting questions. And I am still here the whole day if somebody wants to have a specific question. Thank you very much.